Welcome to this special episode with my friend Troy Black. We're going to be talking about politics. That's right, politics. It's a subject that I have avoided in the past to a large extent, but we're going to d dive deep into it. And I pray and believe that this will be a blessing to you. So, Troy, it is great to have you with us today. Randy, thank you so much uh, for having me on. And can I just say, I also, uh, I'm not a huge fan of talking about politics, and that may shock some people who follow my content, but it's it's not my first choice. It's something I believe that the Lord has asked me to talk about, and that's that's why I'm why I'm talking about it, why I'm here today. Well, I have to say, Troy, that uh, we have become friends, and I follow your program on uh, your channel, Troy Black YouTube channel. Uh, you speak a lot of a lot of about a lot of current events, relevant topics uh, to today. But what I love about what you do in a humble fashion is that as a prophet, you couch those uh, utterances within the Word of God. So everything is benchmarked against God's word. So when we talk about politics, my first question to you, Troy, is the church, by and large, seems to uh, kind of avoid the subject for the same reason that you and I might avoid the subject. And that is we're about God, not about, uh, you know, all of the advertisements you see on TV. So how right. do you feel about the church's response to today in politics and what's going on? Well, uh, some of the some of what I may share during this interview, Randy, um, uh, w will be either prophecy I've heard in the past or potentially so if the Lord gives me something to share right now, um, I may go ahead and share it. But I just want to say up front for those listening, you know, if I share a prophetic word or something that I say that I heard from the Lord, I would encourage every person listening to take that word to the Lord in prayer you know, and um, just allow the Holy Spirit to confirm or deny what's from Him. And I think that's just a healthy way to view prophecy. I try to say that up front. Um, so, so you're asking about uh, the the church and how we've responded to politics in general, and is it healthy? Is it not healthy? Uh, there, you know, there's a variety of responses. There, there's almost a mixture, you know. And what God has kind of shown me is that there's these two sides to uh, especially what's happened over the last four years, we've seen a huge, you know, influx of uh, just, I'm, I'm really just like infighting within the church when it comes to politics in a lot of ways, you know, and, and the Lord has shown me these two different sides, you know, of, of the fence. And here's the crazy thing that, um, that God's been showing me that, you know, a lot of people probably would not expect is that, to an extent, people are right on both sides and to an extent, people are wrong on both sides, you know, and, and that's, that's where we all are as believers. You know, I think the question is not, am I, that we should be asking is not, am I right about this political stance when it comes to an individual, you know, leader like Donald Trump or someone like that? Like, not, am I right about my stance in that, but Lord, what are you saying about this? And what are you telling me to do about it? You know, because that at the end of the day, we can have all of the all of the book learning in the world, meaning all of the, the theology down, and we can have all of the wisdom. You know, Solomon had more wisdom than anyone on earth, and yet he wrote the book of Ecclesiastes. And and we have to wonder, you know, like, <laughs> is there more to life than just wisdom? You know, like, is there something he was missing, right? And uh, and and so you know, and then obviously he made a lot of mistakes and stuff later in his life. But but it's it's like that question of you know, we can have all of that. And yet there's one more thing that's missing, you know, and it's what Jesus said to Mary and to Martha, when Martha comes into the room and says, Jesus, uh, I, I'm in the kitchen preparing, I'm doing all this hard work and Mary's not doing anything, tell her to help me. And Jesus says, Martha, Martha, you're worried and bothered about so many things. But then he says, but only one thing is necessary. Mary has chosen the better part, which shall not be taken away from her. You know, and so there's this message that God has given me, and I believe it's a message of clarity for the church, you know, and, and it's for myself as well. I think it's something we all need to hear. But when it comes to politics, especially in the American society and the American church today, 
uh, a lot of times we want to be Martha in the kitchen and we want to be doing enough. We want to be figuring everything out. We want to have answers to all of the issues, to all of the questions, to all of the leaders, to who do we support? Who do we not support? You know, but the most important thing is, are we sitting at the feet of Jesus and are we hearing what he has to say to us? You know, because we're going to have to get up in the morning and we're going to have to go do something that doesn't involve directly involve politics you know, and we're not going to know what to do, you know, unless we're hearing the master's voice, you know? And so that like, is God speaking about polit- politics and issues and leaders? Yes, absolutely. Is he bringing clarity w- to what's happened over the last, you know, four to eight years? Yes, I believe so. But at the same time, God's also saying, don't miss the most important thing. Don't miss the thing that, that that's even more important and here's the cool thing is if we get that one thing and we miss everything else, we're going to be okay. God's mm-hmm. going to help it work out. But if we get everything else and we miss that one thing, we're not going to be okay. Mm-hmm. You know? And so there's a priority there and, and that's what the Lord keeps pushing me back toward. So yeah, I hope that helps answer that question. <laughs> well, it does because we have to keep first things first, don't we? And I know when Jesus was asked about something uh, akin to what we're talking about, uh, you know, he, he used a coin mm-hmm. and he showed the, the, the coin with Caesar on one side of the coin. He said, render unto Caesar. We know the things of Caesar and to, and to God, the, the things of God. And so we think of that uh, almost politics in terms of a two-sided coin in a way, yeah. you know, it's one or the other, but you can't mix or commingle the two because they need to remain uh, separate. So we have some, um, uh, quite frankly, some polarizing figures who are in politics today, both in yeah. a party. And, and when we talk about that, I know some of you are watching and you're from other countries, but you've got this going on too in your country. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a polarization, I think, of both figures and how they present themselves and also sides. So one of those uh, figures is uh, former President Donald Trump. So, and people want to know, uh, you know, who should I vote for? Does he, he, you know, he uses cuss words sometimes. His lifestyle yeah. doesn't seem to be reflective of what a good Christian or, you know, a Christian should uh, be doing sometimes, or at least in the past, certainly. So how, how can I discern uh, a figure like that versus another figure, let's say, who... Um, who has a very liberal uh, interpretation of uh, of abortion, things of that nature. So uh, kind of speak, if you will, to wh- what side of that coin we should be on as a body. Yeah, well, here's what I believe is that when an issue, when it comes to an issue like abortion, that absolutely matters to the Lord, that issue is going to be a deciding factor. You know, like it's it's just going to come down to, what is God saying about the some of the most important, some of the most critical issues? And if if you're listening to me and you're saying, well, how do we know what are the most important issues? I would ask the Lord. You know, I'd ask the Holy Spirit. I would read the Word and ask the Holy Spirit to reveal that to you because I believe He wants to. You know, and and the Lord has just spoken to me very clearly about some of the issues. You know, and saying that these are the most important. You know, like these are the ones that I value the most. And that doesn't mean that God doesn't value the other issues. You know, He does, and He does care about you know, people from bef- before birth to, to, to death, you know, he cares about the entire life of an individual. Yet there are some issues like the issue of abortion, you know, that I believe um, weigh on God's heart more than others, uh, you know, and um, one of the things that we as a church in some ways, and I've seen this mainly through comments on YouTube, but also through people that I know in my own life, you know, I have uh, personal friends who love people like Donald Trump. I have personal friends who despise Donald Trump, you know, but I'm friends with both because they're they're my friends first off, but also we, we can unite around the message of the gospel, right? Like, because we're believers. And even those that I know that are not believers, it's like, my heart is still to love them, to reach out to them, you know, and to be Christ-like to them, whether we agree or not, you know, politically. Um, But at the same time, someone like Donald Trump, you know, it's like, yes, I've seen people say, um, so one, one comment I got, you know, I heard a word from the Lord um, several several years back. It was maybe three three or four years back um, now. It's probably three years, uh, you know, where the Lord said that um, some people are idolizing Donald Trump. 
you know, and I shared that. And it's interesting because he kind of hit both sides of the coin. He said, you know, like uh, over here, some people are idolizing him. And he's like, but over here, some people are rejecting the notion that I could even talk about something like this, you know, like mm -hmm. that is like, it's like, so it's like, um, he was kind of stepping on everyone's toes and I'm like, Lord, do you really want me to share this? I don't think anyone's going to want to hear this. Right. You know, but one of the responses I got was, uh, someone specifically said, and I'm not trying to hurt this person's feelings if they're listening, you know, but it's just, it was, it, it kind of rang true in, as an example, but one of the responses I got was, we're not idolizing him. He's just our savior. Mm. And in my heart bled in that moment, oh. you know, and, and, and it's like, man, like, it's like, I'm not saying that everybody's idolizing Donald Trump. I'm, I'm not saying that because not everybody is, you know, and supporting someone is not the same thing as idolizing them, but some people are, you know, and the Lord would not be saying that, you know, through me if, if, if that weren't the case. And the idea of a human being, whether they be political or just to even someone in our own lives, like a mother, father figure, or even, uh, you know, a spouse, you know, or a potential spouse like we're waiting for, or even a Christian leader, anybody else in our lives who we've deemed as our savior, uh, we, we've placed a value on them and we've, we've exalted them to a place they shouldn't be mm -hmm. because only Jesus Christ deserves that place in our hearts. You know, only he deserves to be on the throne of our hearts you know, because he is ultimately our savior, you know, the one that came, who lived a perfect life, who died for us, who, he, who took all of the punishment we deserved upon himself. You know, it's like in, in every sense of the word, he came and he saved us when we didn't deserve it, mm -hmm. you know, and, and he's the only one, you know, like nobody else gets close. Nobody else gets close. You know, there shouldn't be a, a close second, you know, in that, in that equation, you know, it's like, and, and, and is God stepping on some toes when he says things like that, that like some people are idolizing Trump? Yes, he is. You know, but at the same time, does that mean that we, we can't support someone like Trump? I don't think so. You know, I, I believe as a Christian, you know, that, um, and I vote pro-life and I believe we should support the issues that God cares about. And sometimes God uses people that are not necessarily Christian or maybe, maybe they are, and they're not very mature yet in the faith, you know, and they're, and, and they're kind of still living in a worldly sense, like, um, in the, in, in a carnal sense and they need to, they need to mature. I'm not sure, you know, you know, where, and, and I can't pretend to know where everyone's at, but at the same time, it's like God will use people, whether Christian or not, in order to enact his purposes and his will on earth. And in order to turn things around in society sometimes, but, but how do we know, you know, like, how do we know if that's someone we should be supporting or not? we as individuals have to go to the Lord in prayer and we have to say, Lord, what are you trying to do here? And if you're not going to reveal that to me, at least show me what I'm supposed to do. At, mm -hmm. at the very least, show me what you want me to do. You know, and we don't have to understand that. God may say, I want you to support this person. I want you to vote for this person. And we're like, I don't know why, Lord, but I know you're saying it. You know, it, mm -hmm. if it lines up with his with His word and and with what God values in the word and, it, and if it's what the Holy Spirit is saying, we can run with it, whether we understand it or not, uh, you know, and, and obviously there's a lot of judgment that comes with, uh, you know, uh, with uh, people supporting Donald Trump and things like that. Um, I, I'm just reminded of uh, in, in John uh, chapter seven, it says, do not judge with by the outward appearance, but judge with righteous judgment. You know, this is something that Jesus says, he's like, people are going to look at you and they're going to judge you based on what they assume is, is happening, mm -hmm. you know, but God's looking at the heart. You know, we see that same thing in, in the book of Samuel, uh, where, where Samuel comes and he looks at all of these strong, you know, tall brothers of David. Right. And, and mm -hmm. then, and then he's like, you know, God says, no, I, I, it's not, it's not any of these. I've rejected them, you know, because he knew what was in David's heart, you know, and then it says the Lord, people look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. So, it really doesn't matter at the end of the day, whether even other believers understand what stances we're taking or what decisions we're making politically. We don't have to share that with everyone. If God's not leading us to, you know, you can, you can vote and you can support the issues God cares about. You, you can do what God's telling you to do without sharing it with the world. If that's what God's asking you to do, mm -hmm. you know, now if God tells you to take a, a public stance on something, then you do that, but you don't have to stir up controversy just because it's there, you know, just because you have the opportunity. A lot of times, you know, we're just meant to live at peace with as many people as we can. You know, like Paul says, like uh, uh, it's like a lot of times we're meant to be promoters of peace, not not stirring up controversy on purpose. But at the same time, you know, even when God tells us to do something that does seem controversial to others or does 
you know, cause others to cast judgment upon us. We need to remember that God's looking at the heart. The only thing God is asking for is obedience. You know, he's looking at, did, did you do what I told you to do the way I told you to do it? You know, like, <laughs> like when I told you to do it, it's like, that's what he's looking for, you know, and there's grace there for when we have it, you know, there, there's, there's the, the mercy of God and there's the help of the Holy spirit to get us back on track, uh, which I, which I'm just so grateful for. But at the same time, it's like, that's what God's looking for. You know, and, and I think there's a burden that that God places upon every believer that we know if we're fulfilling, if we're responding to it or not. And it's a burden to seek him and say, God, what would you have me do? Mm. Yeah, that's, that's kind of a precarious position to be in. Uh, you know, what would God have me do? Because I think a lot of um, a lot of people want somebody to tell them what to do. In other right. words, it would be very easy for you or, or me to say, vote for this one right now, because this one is supporting the, let's say, the pro-life movement or something to that effect. Um, now, you're putting together, uh, Troy, a documentary, which is going to kind of elucidate a lot of the different facets of the election. It's very timely, I think, when you're going to release this. But uh, tell us a little about about that and the reason why you decided to produce a uh, documentary about uh, the election. Yeah, so um, I, I could say that it started with a prophetic word. Um, one of the things I believe about Donald Trump specifically is that God is using him, um, that that this is not random, you know, that God has, has, has been orchestrating events and even planning things in order to use him for something very specific in uh, the American society and even in the world today. You know, and so that's a word I've gotten from the Lord several times that he's using, he's using him, you know, and so um, there's this, uh, there's this word I got back in, I don't remember, it's November of last year, something like that, where it was just like, I, I had this like vision of a documentary about Donald Trump, you know, and it was just like, um, and I was like, Lord, are you trying to tell me that somebody's supposed to make a documentary, you know? Hmm. And then like, I'm sitting there and suddenly the Holy Spirit just gave me this knowledge where it was like, no, you're supposed to make a documentary, you know? <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I'm supposed to do that, you know? And so uh, it was just a moment of like, I guess I'm going to try to do that. You know, I don't know how to do that, but um, but I know the Lord is, has, has definitely given me the skills to do it and everything. And I can see how he's worked things together. But but the purpose of it is not it's not to bash Trump and it's not to it's not to idolize him either on the other side. The purpose of it is actually to um, to try to tell and as, as accurate as we can get to try to tell the accurate story of um, what happened leading up to his 2016 election. And and we're going to we're going to kind of show from a quote unquote secular perspective, God's hand, like leading up to that and how. It was like things were just not even like it, 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 there's no way that all these coincidences could have happened together if, if God wasn't behind it, you know. And so but we're going to keep it very secular in that sense of not not necessarily outwardly saying now God did this and God did that. Um, but instead, just showing painting the picture of what happened so that we can get to the moment at the end of the film, at the end of the documentary, where um, I'm going to share the gospel message very clearly and very concisely and, and just very, you know, just um, blatantly, you know, say, hey. Um, whether you love Donald Trump or not, you know, like nobody on this earth can save you, you know, you need a real savior and that savior is Jesus Christ, you know, and, and, uh, at the same time, I believe the story is going to speak for itself. And I believe, um, even those people that, um, you know, however people feel about Donald Trump, I, I guess I could say it like this people that absolutely, you know, um, I love him, you know, to the nth degree, probably are going to not like him as much, but the people that absolutely hate him are probably going to like him a little more, you know, it's probably going to like bring people to the middle a little bit, politically speaking, but that's not, that's not really what I'm after. What I'm after is I'm after people's hearts, whether, whether conservative or liberal, I'm after people that need to come to come home and meet Jesus for themselves personally, because here's what I believe, Randy, is that when people's hearts get changed, God is going to swing their political views any direction they need to go. And God's going to change people's hearts about the issues as well. And that's something we've seen. Um, I shared a, a prophetic word about uh, specifically about abortion on my channel um, a year, maybe a year and a half ago, you know, and, and I rarely ever have seen somebody swing from one side of the fence to the other, you know, but after, after sharing this word, this message that God gave me, I saw a, at least a one or two comments on there where the, these women said, Hey, um, I like, 
like, oh, okay. So one comment was uh, a, a believer who, you know, had had an abortion before she was saved and she felt like God could never forgive her for that. And she finally found freedom from that, you know, and said, I, I believe I'm forgiven now, you know, like mm. this is amazing, you know? And then another person was someone who believed that abortion was okay, you know, and they literally watching the video swing to the other side. And they said, you just changed my mind about abortion, mm. you know, and that just typically doesn't happen. You know, and I think one of the reasons it doesn't happen is because we come at it with a world, we're trying to solve a spiritual problem with a worldly solution, mm. you know, and we're coming at it with, uh, with, with, with anger, but it, but it's not, and at the same time, it's, it's with our anger and it's with our wisdom in response to that anger, not necessarily with the, the Holy Spirit's righteous anger and with his, uh, his wisdom, you know, and we, we need that. We need to connect to the Holy Spirit's wisdom. You know, um, I, I believe it's James that talks about the, how the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God, mm-hmm. you know, but, but then the righteousness, we see that Hebrews talks about how the righteousness of God uh, is, is a free gift that's given through Jesus' sacrifice once for all time. You know, Jesus paid this sacrifice one time for all, for all time, for all sins. So it's like any time somebody needs forgiveness, they have to go back to that moment. They have to go to what Jesus did for them. They ha- that's the only way, you know, and, and it also, it contrasts that under the new covenant to the old covenant, which it, it, it talks about how, you know, the, the, the priests stood daily ministering in the temple. Like they, they had to perform sacrifices one after another. And then every single year they had to do the same things over and over and over again, you know? And it's because that was the the kind of covenant that they were under. And, you know, and, but then, it, then Hebrews echoes the old Testament and says, um, sacrifices is, is, this is not even what I desired, you know, like I didn't mm-hmm. desire these things. And it even talks about how all those sacrifices weren't enough to cover the sin of the people. They really didn't do it. It's like that past sin was overlooked because of what Jesus was going to come and do, you know? And it's like, those things were just um, tests of faith. Are you willing to believe what I say? You know, it's like, but that faith uh, was, was fulfilled. The, the, the promise was fulfilled through that faith later based on what Jesus did, you know? So it's like this idea of we used to be under a covenant that involved a lot of self-sacrifice but now we're in a covenant where we look at Jesus's sacrifice and the Holy Spirit is asking the American church and anyone listening, really, uh, no matter what the political situation looks like in, in your country, he's asking us this question. Are you going to respond based on the old covenant way of doing things or are you going to respond based on the new covenant way of doing things? And we see we see a foreshadowing of this in the Old Testament with the story of Jeho- Jehoshaphat. Uh, so, so King Jehoshaphat, you know, is going up against these armies. He's, he's, he's leading the army of God, but he's going up against these armies that they can't possibly be. Right. Mm-hmm. And it, it reminds me of the political situation here in the United States, you know, in a lot of ways, you know, we see the corruption, we see, um, um, some of the things that are happening that it feels like there's, there's no human like way to overcome, right. Or to correct. And what did God ask Jehoshaphat to do? He didn't say, I want you to go fight them and just try really hard. You know, he wasn't asking for sacrifice. He told him, you worship (laughs) and I'm going to fight this battle for you. You know, and I'm reminded of um, January 6th. So I'm just going to say, I know it's going to raise some red flags and, you know, it's going to bring up emotions, but I'm reminded of January 6th. And I don't know, I don't pretend to know what God asked every person to do, you know, like, I believe there were some Christians there and it's like, did, you know, I don't know if God asked Christians to go that day or not. I I have no idea, you know? Uh, So I'm not pretending to know that, but what if I I would ask this question, what if there were some Christians that were there that day who, if God, if they had taken the time to say, God, what do you want me to do today? What if there were some Christians who God would have said, I want you to stay home and worship. Hmm. And it's like, what, what, out, how would the outcome have changed? And I, I, and I heard this word today, right? I'm not today, but this week, I heard this word this week and I want to share it if it's okay. Um, I heard the Lord say this to me. He said, what would happen if Jehoshaphat had fought when I told him to worship? Hmm. What would have happened? Hmm. He could have gone into that battle to prove a point, you know, and the point would have been, look, God, God, look at how corrupt these people are. They're coming after your nation. Look at how evil they are. Look at how um, strong they are. Like, I can't, I, like God, I can't believe you put us in this situation. You, he could have made that point, 
you know, but what would have happened? It, like it wouldn't have ended. He would have made a point and it would have ended badly, hmm. you know, instead of God, what do you want me to do? And then God gave him a foolish, seemingly foolish thing to do. And he put the worshipers out front. And I tell this story to my kids sometimes, you know, like they like to hear Bible stories at night. And I tell them the story of King Jehoshaphat sometimes. And I, it's like every time I tell this story, <laughs> I, I try to explain what, what it was that putting the worshipers out front meant. You know, and what were those people thinking? You know, and I, I like tear up every time, you know, because I'm like, if I was that worshiper out front, what would, what would I be thinking in that moment? Like, I would have to have an insane amount of trust in what God had said. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, because I didn't, I don't, I don't have any weapons on me. I've got some drumsticks and a drum or a bugle or, you know, whatever it is. It's like, I, like, like I am, I am, I am completely and utterly placing myself in the hand, myself in the hand of God and saying, God, if you don't, if you don't come through, I'm done for this. This is, I have no plan B. There's no backup plan. There's nothing else. You know, it's like, if God doesn't do something miraculous, then this is it. (laughs) You know, my time is over. And I, you know, I believe that for some of us, the thing that God is asking us to do when it comes to the political situation sounds foolish. It seems foolish. It doesn't feel like the wise, intelligent thing that our intellect is telling us to do. It doesn't feel like the thing that uh, you know the the media is telling us to do it doesn't feel like the thing that even some of those that we trust in the church are telling us to do necessarily in some cases but but the it it has to be it's either it's either what the holy spirit is saying or it's not and 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 we know you know we know if 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 it's his voice or if it's not and and it's critical randy it's critical mm-hmm. you know that we listen to what he's saying mm-hmm. amen to that you know another one we're familiar with is uh gideon's army you know the Lord kept paring his army down to the point where he would have otherwise been overridden by the opposing forces, if not for the intervention of God uh, in that situation. I, I love that, Troy, hearing uh, from the Lord foremost and not uh, letting reason, our biased reason, our limited reason to dictate sometimes our actions. You know, uh, Troy, I was having a a dinner not too long ago, and uh, this was during the uh, primary election where someone was uh, saying, well, they were for uh, one candidate. It was not Donald Trump. And if that if Donald Trump was nominated, th- that person would not vote for uh, the, the current president because of the uh, she was a pro-life uh, person. But if Donald Trump got the nomination, she just wouldn't vote. She just would would not vote. And we know statistically that many uh, many Christians just don't vote. I forget what was the Gallup poll that, or one of the Pew or one of the uh, large researchers uh, showed that I think it was uh, less than sixty percent. Mm. And that if that Christian vote was larger, that is more numbers of people from the Christian community had voted that would have changed the outcome of the election. So what do you say uh, prophetically to somebody now saying, well, if it's this person, uh, let's say Donald Trump versus Joe Biden, I'll go with a nicer guy or I'll go with, uh, you know, I can... I can take one stance or another. What do you think prophetically God is, he's giving us a choice, kind of a one or the yeah. other right now. What do you think prophetically God is saying that would help guide our decision one way or another? Yeah, so I'll just share what I've heard for myself personally. I've shared this on my channel before. Um, I personally believe, and again, I you know I know this might step on some toes, mm-hmm. so I would encourage every person to take this to the Lord in prayer see what God has to say about it and listen to the voice of the Holy spirit above me, you know, because I'm a human being, you know, and it, it, the Holy spirit inside of you is going to tell you what to do. If you, if you humble yourself before him and you listen, but, um, but one of the things that um, the words I've gotten is that, uh, that I've, that I, that I've heard from the Lord is that um, the Lord told me that he wants Donald Trump to, to be in power. Like, that's what I heard. Now, does that mean that Donald Trump's going to do all good stuff? Not necessarily you know, because he's a flawed human being. And does that mean that God wants him in power for the reasons that we might assume? I don't know, you know, but that's one of the things I've heard. So 
for me personally, I would encourage people to vote that direction. Um, but I believe that has a lot to do with the pro-life stance and some of those, some of those other issues that, you know, are, are, are very critical yet at the same time, more importantly than that, I would say you need to, you need to hear from the Lord for yourself. And this is a word I heard from the Lord this week, Randy, he simply quoted a scripture to me, um, while I was praying about this, you know, this topic in this interview and what he quoted to me was, uh, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 38 says, but my righteous one will live by faith. And it actually goes on to say, and if he shrinks back, my soul has no pleasure in him. And so there is obviously a reference to the Messiah, because this is a, this is an Old Testament prophecy, you know, being repeated. Uh, But, you know, and Jesus did not shrink back. You know, Jesus was the only one who was lived perfectly righteous. And when we shrink back in, in some ways, obviously, if we reject, reject Christ, that's a, that's a big issue, right? But I'm talking about just the little ways that we shrink back and it's like, well, I didn't live by, I didn't walk by faith in this moment. There's grace for us. Okay. There's, there's grace for us today. And the Holy spirit wants to help us walk through that. And and he wants us to learn from that. And he wants us to understand that we're not rejected. You know, that the love Mm -hmm. of the father still holds us. He still holds us in his hands. But at the same time, there is a response to receiving righteousness by grace and through faith, you know, uh, where we want to keep walking by faith. We want to keep, and listen, we can't, walk by faith without hearing the word you know faith comes from hearing and hearing by the word Mm -hmm. and specifically it talks that you know the the original greek language there is the utterance not you know not just like a written word but it's, it's talking about the the utterance of the holy spirit it's him making the word alive to us so if we're going to walk by faith we have it has to be relational that's what he's talking about it has to be relational and so if we make a decision where we say, well, I'm just not going to vote at all. It, it, please, everyone, please hear this in love and, and please, you know, take this with a grain of salt. And no, I'm not trying to judge anyone at all. But based on what I've, I've heard this week, I believe that that is not, that's not a step of faith. That's a step of, of, of shrinking back and it's a step of fear and it's responding in, in fear instead of faith. God has something for us to do. He has a, a step for us to take, whether that's you know, going back to the January 6th thing, could God have told some people to go that day? Sure. I don't know. You know, I don't know what God said to every, every Christian that was there. Like, could could God have said? Sure. But we have to know what God is saying. You know, like, mm-hmm. it, it, is this a Jehoshaphat moment or not? You know, like, is this a moment where I'm supposed to put my worshipers out front? Now, I believe we should be worshiping all the time. But but when it comes to the the, the that critical moment where we, we say, I don't think there is you know, for some people, some people are going to say, I don't think there is a a right answer. I don't think there is, you know, it's for some people, it's a choice between a lesser of two evils, right? That's the moment where you've got to go to the Lord in prayer. You've got to hear from the Holy Spirit for yourself and you've got to walk by faith, meaning I don't understand, you know, like Mm -hmm. faith, it's like a trust in him where you go, well, Lord, this is what I believe you're telling me to do. I'm going to have to trust you on this because I don't fully understand why you're wanting me to do this. But God sees the full picture and he sees the other side. And, and there's, there's, man, there's life that comes out of that. You know, the, my righteous one will, will live by faith. It's like, that's, that's what the real Christian life is like. You know, Jesus said, I've come to give you life and life to the full or more abundantly. It's like, he's talking about the walk of faith, you know, where we see God stepping in the miracle almost always comes on the other side of the step of faith, you know, like where we see God stepping in, it's like, and, and then we, and we go, okay, now I'm gonna take that next step. I'm gonna take that next step. You know, it's, it's like, it's, it's, it's personal, it's relational, and we're not always going to understand. God's not always going to explain himself fully, you know? Uh, now, if, if you have 48 hours in a day and you, you're going to spend all that time in, in the prayer closet, maybe you are going to fully understand everything, <laughs> but we're not always going to, you know, practically speaking. And a lot of times it's just, no, I know, I know the voice of my shepherd, you know, like Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. And they follow me, you know, I know them, they follow me. And it's like, I know my, the voice of my shepherd and I don't have to always understand what he's asking me to do. I'm just going to say yes, you know, and I'm going to be obedient. Um, and, and that's a personal thing. That's not something that comes from me or anybody else. You know, like I, I can, I can give people a prophetic word that gives them something to pray about, you know, a direction to pray in, but I can't give them the answer that the Holy spirit wants to give them. Mm. I love that. I love that because, you know, it's not, uh, it's not hating one or the other. It's not what it's about. It's following God's will 
Yeah. I oftentimes think of, you know, we have that WWJD saying, you know, what would Jesus do? And I kind of think about that in terms of voting in a way, you know, how would Jesus vote? But I think there's a great opportunity, Troy, and I'm, I'm confident you would agree to me that we can return uh, love for hate in, in this political environment that we're in, this polarizing political environment. We can love our enemy. We can, mm-hmm. we can follow the edict of, of Jesus Christ, which is to love those who persecute you, uh, because then they'll see that we're different. We're different. But if, if we start hating upon those who are on, let's say, the opposing side, then that hate is going to feed off of, of the hate of the person giving it. And it foments then further, not just polarization, because Jesus said he came not uh, he came to div- he came to divide at that time that he was dividing right from wrong, good from evil. However, it is calling out the truth. And Rome, John eight thirty two says, "And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free." Because they won't mm. listen to the truth unless they see that we. Do not desire evil or or, or um, destruction upon them, but we desire God's love and for them to have a relation with Jesus Christ. So, Troy, I know it takes a lot of money to produce these documentaries, and I've read your books as well, and I love your books. I love your program on uh, on YouTube. So, tell us how we can support your effort, both on the documentary where you can find your books, your channel, and also your tremendously fast-growing YouTube channel. Yeah, so um, viewers could go to just Troy Black on YouTube. Um, you can also visit TroyBlackVideos.com. Um, I'm also on Facebook, a little bit on Instagram uh, every now and then. Um, but yeah, if, if, if um, anyone's interested in helping support the documentary, um, I would go watch the teaser trailer first. It's the documentary is called The Outlier, and that teaser trailer was shared on my YouTube channel just a few weeks back. So you can just search for The Outlier on a Donald Trump documentary on YouTube, and you'll probably find it. Um, but then also, if you go watch the teaser trailer, there's going to be a link below that to a Give, Send, Go, which is kind of like GoFundMe. It's a crowdfunding platform uh, where we're raising money to actually produce this documentary. So I think we're over 50 percent uh, of the of the funds uh, that, I, that or, or the goal that's that's been raised so far. Um, we're not asking for a lot. We're trying to do this on a, a guerrilla warfare style budget, you know, where we're just you know, we're just we're doing the best we can with what we got. Um, but but I believe the Lord has is, is asked me to, um, you know, I I picked the goal for the budget that he, he asked me to do. And I believe it's because he wants me to steward well. Um, the finances that we do have, the funds we do have. And if, if we had too much, it would just probably be a waste, you know, and I don't want to do that, um, Mm. with, with the resources that God is giving us. So we're trying to do the best we can on a low budget. Um, but I believe it's going to be very professionally done, you know, and, um, I believe it's going to tell an accurate story, but then also my prayer is that people are going to get saved, you know, watching this, or at least seeds are going to be planted. Um, so yeah, y'all go check out the outlier on YouTube, uh, if you want to help support it. Uh, but yeah, Randy, that last thing you were saying, man, I just, I want to follow up on that if that's okay, real fast, Please. because, you know, I, I shared a word, um, this last week on my channel. Um, and it was, t- if y'all want to go watch the full message, it was titled God, uh, something like God gave me a stern warning about Donald Trump. And, and the, the main gist of it was that, you know, a lot of times it's easy for us to focus on, uh, uh doing things that we believe are steps of faith or, or trying to do things for our nation that's going to revitalize hope, you know, and, and yet first Corinthians 13, 13 says, but now faith, hope, and love remain these three, but the greatest of these is love, you know, and, and this would be, this would be my, my appeal to every person. And it's what I believe the Lord gave me in that prophetic message too, is, is that we should never allow uh, our, our political views or what's even what's happening or the corruption or the injustice or any of it, Anything that's happening, we should never allow that to rob us of the love of Jesus Christ that we should be living with, you know, and we should never use any of that, uh, any of the political stuff to justify hatred in our hearts for other human beings, you know, because at the end, at the end of the day, uh, it's like God wants to save this nation. 
But more than that, he wants to save the people inside of the nation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's because the people are what's important to him. You know, and that's what that's that's he came to die for people, not for countries. You know, not for not for governments, not not for you know, not for anything else. He came to die for people. Mm -hmm. You know, and people are eternal. And, and you know, like you said, Randy, it's like uh, we, we should be able to love those who are on the opposite side. And what what happens when we do that? You know, in today's society. It's like people are going to see the love of Christ. They're going to say, man, something's different. Like I've, I've never had someone who disagrees with me so adamantly politically love me in the way that you've loved me. You know, like, I, please tell me why. <laughs> and please tell me why you just treated me that way you know, or why you responded to my comment that way. You know, like, you yeah. know, it's like it's such a great opportunity um, to to tell people about Jesus and and to to plant seeds, you know, that God is going to grow. Oh. I love that, you know, and to your point, uh, Troy, I, I just happened upon a, um, a pro-choice uh, rally uh, in along the coast. I was just walking the dog, and all of a sudden, I'm I'm going to this spot, and there's a massive a bus, let's out people who are uh, carrying these, you know, pro-choice signs and anti this uh, candidate or whatever, and so I'm caught right now in the middle of this protest. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I don't want to be identified with obviously the, uh, those who are uh, supporting, uh, what would be, um, you know, abortion, uh, on demand. I don't want to be there, but the Lord kind of placed me in the middle of it. So here I am interacting with the folks and, um, and, and I'm not necessarily confronting their issues so much as it is, uh, saying that, uh, you know, God loves you and he loves the, uh, he, lo he loves the unborn as well, you know, and, and you were that person, that unborn person at one time. And I just want you to know that, uh, God loves you despite, however, he does not love a stance that defies his will, which is that the one that he created is able to fulfill his or her purpose in this world as he mm, ordained yeah. it. So we had that course of conversation. And so they were around there, they were ready to, you know, initially I think until we started talking and, and then I started praying with people in the middle of this. And wow. we're just, we had people who were just receiving the Lord. So you never know when you're gonna be uh, hit with an opportunity in those moments. Um, Troy, I'm gonna give you the last word, but before I say that, uh, all of the connections, links uh, for Troy that he mentioned are going to be in the body of, of this message. And uh, I so appreciate you, Troy. You know, I, uh, I know prophets uh, sometimes can speak almost forcefully and because they feel like they have to make a prophecy or whatever, but I don't feel that with you. I feel that you make a, a prophecy that you've heard from the Lord Oftentimes it comes through a, a vision that you have. And uh, I know that, as I said at the beginning of this, that you always support what you're saying with the word of God in a way that uh, is reflective of his word of, of the Lord foremost. And then the prophecy is one that you uh, certainly explain in a way that uh, is in a loving way and one that is grounded in the word of God. So I think that's exceptional, I think in this day and age, because uh, there's so many who are speaking prophecy today who are, I think just doing it um, almost in a way that, that is uh, honoring themselves above God. And I hate to say that, but I'm not saying all. I say that I have many prophet friends and the ones who are uh, friends are speaking uh, declaratively on ba based on what I feel is the word as uh, God's word to them, uh, Rhema word. But you, Troy, I, I especially have a, a kinship for because I believe you're speaking to a day for this time, this day and age, and this this uh, these last days that we are living in, in a way that uh, cuts through all of the other stuff to what God wants to uh, to express. So. Anyway, I, as I said, I'm going to give you, Troy, the last word, and then I'll do my uh, sign-off, and then we'll, uh, we'll see each other again, uh, hopefully, if not on, earth, on this earth, uh, in heaven. 
Well, Randy, thank you so much for having me today. Honestly, it's an honor just to be here and to be able to share. And that you're willing to let me come on and share on your platform is is a huge honor. Um, and I and I appreciate everything you do. And um, yeah, I I, th I think um, you know this this is the uh, this, this is the last thing uh, that I just feel like the Lord is asking me to share. If that's okay, uh, is is that there is a foolish factor um, that many Christians are ignoring. Um, when it comes to uh, walking by faith. And I think you mentioned it earlier, you know, but Jesus says, if you want to, uh, if you want to even enter this kingdom, you've got to be converted and become like a child, um, you know, and, and uh, you know, Paul says, bear with me in a little foolishness, you know, <laughs> like, and he <laughs> says, you are bearing with me. Right. But, but there's this idea of the foolishness of, you know, you know, the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. There's this idea but the, of God using the, the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, you know, and that same thing happens when it comes to what we, what, how we're supposed to be living as Christians, you know, like, and, and this would be my, the last thing I would, I just sense from the Holy Spirit to leave everyone with is just this question of what foolish thing have I asked you to do that you're unwilling to do? <laughs> mm, I love it. You know, yeah. like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, come back to that moment and say yes. You know, come back to that mm -hmm. moment and say yes instead. Um, so yeah, I, I, I hope I hope people can hear that in love. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm laughing. I trust that uh, many others are as well. So that's a that's a great uh, finishing word. Well, again, I thank you so much, Troy. And uh, now, uh, for those who are watching, if uh, if you know the Lord as uh, Jesus Christ as, as your Lord and your Savior, um, then I have great news for you. Be of good cheer because heaven is in your future. Take care and God bless. Thanks for listening. Please like and subscribe. And if you'd like further information, go to our website at randyk.org where our mission is simple, to share the great news of God's love.